Good morning. Hello. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to Winged Horse Designs. I'm Donna Goodwin. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located in Brookings, South Dakota. And today I'm going to show you, oh, lighting can be difficult on a cloudy day like this. I'm going to show you my way of doing a waterfall card. So I'm going to switch cameras real quick because the lighting is a little bit better on this camera. So you're, it starts out looking like a basic card, except you have this fun interactive piece here that as you pull it, it rotates panels. And then I've used it as a congratulations card. And then you just push it back. Now you can take and leave it flat like this and just simply put a piece of white on the back or whatever neutral color you're going to do to write on. Or you can do like I've done and you can just put it on the front of a standard open and closed card. But if you're looking, if you have a lot of bulk and you're looking to reduce bulk, you can just simply put something on the back. So I'm gonna set this up in the corner. And I opted to use the inked and tiled stamp set. I just like the artistic look of these botanicals on this. And I like the sentiments and the greetings as well today. I'm just going to use congratulations, but you could, you have happy birthday, just a note, lots of love. Hello, friend. Thank you. There's a lot you can do with that. And I'm opting to use this piece here, this little flower here, this flower on the stem, and then the word congratulations. But this is just a really fun set, I think, to work with. I'm going to pair it up with just one sheet of the Inked Botanicals Designer Series paper. These are on sale. Some of them have become temporarily unavailable because they were so popular during the free shipping day uh, earlier this week. But these are available on sale through the end of this month. So this one has these lovely floral patterns. I'm going to move this out of the way for the moment. Whoops. I'm going to move this out of the way for a moment. But it just has these lovely patterns on it. And it is obviously a six by six, but just pretty colors, some leaves, some flowers. Something that's a little bit more geometric. But lovely colors and lovely flowers. And then if you flip them all over, you have some geometric designs. Isn't that pretty in the Lost Lagoon? This is the one I chose to use today. But you just have some other patterns, some paper that looks like texture. Some more kind of flowers. I debated between this piece and this piece. Polka dots, another pretty piece with some Calypso coral on petal pink. More polka dots. This looks like wheat to me, so I'm waiting for the fall to use that piece. Um, just kind of a unusual pattern there and some more texture there. So really fun pack of paper. This is, this is out of my second pack because my first pack only has bits and pieces left. You won't need to write the measurements down. They're in the description, but this is going to be... This is for a three fall card, so three falls. And I started with a basic card, five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So I'm gonna give this a good crease with my bone folder and set it aside. And then you need a piece for your mechanism and you're gonna want it to be whatever width you choose to make these pieces here. And I started with a piece that was 11, whoops, there we go, that was 11 inches long. And I do that until I get done, I'll talk about it again, but until I get closer to the end. You want this first panel here to be the same measurement as this one. And then you're gonna score every three quarters of an inch for those panels. So since you have three falls, we need three folds. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. You need an anchoring mechanism. And then you need your mats. I This is crushed curry. I chose Moody Mauve. 
And so I have three pieces here since I'm going to do three falls that measures two inches by two inches. Nice, easy measurement. A piece of neutral cardstock for either the back of your card or the inside of your card. Four inches by five and a quarter inches. Three more pieces of neutral card stock for your stamping. That's mine are one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, but just a smidge smaller than your Moody Moth. For those of you who have a hate relationship with measurements. And then you can, if you choose, put some pretty paper on the front, which I did choose, and that's four inches by five and a quarter inches. So you know me, I like to start with the stamping, so we'll bring these in. I'm using one, I'm using three ink colors. I'm using Moody Mob, Lost Lagoon for my little stems here. That's the only piece of Lost Lagoon and in the front, so in the inside. So that's the only Lost Lagoon. And then Crushed Curry. I am going to do some stamping off to get these a little bit lighter. So let's bring in a piece of scrap paper to protect my desk. And all this white is going to make the camera go crazy. So I'm going to start with this one. And I forgot to bring my sponge daubers over here. So we'll use the smaller makeup sponges that I keep handy that I pick up at the dollar store. This is big enough I could have used the regular size sponge daubers, but that's okay. They're over there and I didn't plan ahead and get them over here. So If you haven't taken advantage of that designer series paper sale, you really should. It's there's several of them that are on sale right now. And then we're going to ink up the stem. Just takes a little bit longer when you're using makeup daubers on a, such a large space. And I'm just going to stamp this over on my left corner. And that's full strength. And I really wanted it stamped off. But there's another side to the paper, so... Now I actually have choices. I can flip it. Do I want full strength or do I want soft and subtle? So I have two choices. Let's see if I can remember what I'm doing on this one. So let's go ahead and do this piece next. Okay, that's the green one. If you like the videos that I share, please do like, comment, and share. I thoroughly enjoy reading the comments that people give me. All right. Stamp off, remember? I'll remember this time. I'll stamp off, and then I'll just stamp this one. Set that one aside, set that stamp aside. And while I have the Moody Mauve out, let's just go ahead and do this panel here.
with this flower. There we go, that panel. So I'm gonna stamp off once and I'm just gonna stamp randomly. And then this time I'm gonna stamp off twice, kind of turn it a bit. And there we go, just randomly stamp that. I'm gonna clean this one so that I can use it again. But before I put, actually, before I put the Moody Mauve away, let's go ahead and stamp congratulations on this one. And we'll put the Moody Mauve away, clean this stamp. And stamp it in crushed curry for this panel. It looks like I did full, no, I don't think I did full strength. I still think I stamped off. But remember, I have, oh, I did do full strength. There we go. So just kind of randomly, you can do the whole thing or you can just do a few. And then we need to stamp this here. So I need to bring this stamp back in and clean it. So I'm just going to stamp crushed curry on top of crushed curry. And that just gives us a little bit on that. So before I cut the bottom and put the holes and things in it, I'm just going to go ahead and start putting my panels together so we can move this out of the way. And we can start working on assembly. So let's start by gluing our front pretty piece on and our inside in. I don't know about the rest of you, but I love fun folds. There's just some th something about a fun fold that interactivity of it that just makes fun folds really wonderful. I do have another waterfall fold to show you as well when we're finished putting this one together. So for the mechanism, I'm going to go ahead and put some really strong adhesive on either end. Because remember, this is our anchor piece, so we want it to hold good and steady. I'm going to set this aside for the moment. We're going to start putting our waterfall mechanism together. 
I'm dropping everything today. As long as they don't fall on the floor and I lose them, right? You know, we're almost at the end of June. Can you believe it? The year's almost half over. But that means July's coming up, and I need to start thinking about what am I going to show you during July. So if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. And you can just leave them in the comments, and I will monitor those comments. We'll stop that one. So you're going to start by deciding which one you want to be your top panel. And I've decided I want this one to be my top panel. And this one fits exactly the same size. So we can just put it. And I'm actually putting an adhesive on the fall waterfall mechanism. And we're going to glue this first piece on completely. That's right. Nope, that's backwards. Well, this is now going to be our bottom piece. We're just going to flip these around. You put on your third piece first, and then your next piece. You only want adhesive here, so rather than put adhesive on that piece, I'm going to put it on the mechanism. And then your top piece goes on this piece here. So we're just reversing these two because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. If you were putting sentiments on here, then you might really care about the order that they go in. Or if you're building a scene, you might care about the order they go in. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of a dry fit. I'm going to decide where I want this to sit. I definitely don't want this to come below here. And I know that I'm going to punch out, so that's going to take a little bit off. So I'm thinking that that's about where I want it to be. And then we're going to dry fit this anchor piece in here. And probably right about there. So we can go ahead and lay that down. Where did I decide? And if I forgot to mention, this is one by four and a quarter. But we want that good and strong so that it's not going to come loose. And we're going to go ahead and punch this out with a punch. Um, I'm using the fancy tag topper. This one, I used a different one. You can find this in the clearance rack. And I'm going to slide this in and punch this. And then we're going to slide this underneath our locking mechanism. and decide where we want. And we could go off to the side, into the middle. We can go anywhere we want. I'm going to go slightly off center here. And we're just going to put our glue right here. So this kind of helps us determine where we need to put our adhesive. You could use tear and tape, or you can use liquid glue. Or even, well, I would recommend probably tear and tape or liquid glue. I'm going to put more than you normally see me use because 
double-sided tape sometimes dries out a bit and comes loose. So then we're just going to fold this at the top fold here and fold it right down on top of it. Try to get it. I'm going to try and see if I can get it straight. And while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and put the embellishments on and then we'll put our pull string on. So I chose the, look at this, I only have seven left. I chose the brushed butterflies. I like these because they're flat. And you have to be a little bit careful with your embellishments on this type of a card. So we'll just put a little butterfly on this flower. Uh, butterfly on these flowers. They're kind of flying to each other here. But then we need something to look like it's anchoring down our, you know, like it's a, uh, a rivet or something like that. Now, while this is crushed curry and these are wild wheat, I still thought that they looked pretty nice. So I'm going to put one on each end here. You don't have to do this, but I just think it looks nice. It makes it look like there's a rivet holding it in place. Now that gives me an even number and I don't like even numbers. So I'm just going to grab another one and just stick it over here. And this way I have odd numbers and that makes me happy. Now we can put in some form of a mechanism. Now the only thing I have that kind of matches this card is the 2023 to 2025 jute twine. And so I'll just take a piece of the Moody Mauve. And run it through this little hole. And now we have something to grab a hold of this and pull this. So here's a three, three waterfall card. So I hope you like that. Here's a different card that I did. This one I flipped it horizontally and the pieces are much bigger, but as long as you have enough room to slide it in and out on these, you're fine as long as it doesn't go past your card. Now, if you want to use much bigger pieces, you would have to build a bigger card. So here's another one with three waterfalls. And this one is a kind of fun. This paper here is the back, the geometric side of one of the sheets in Gone Fishing or Let's Go Fishing. And then the stamps here are from the Hey Chuck. And I just think these chickens are so cute and so fun. So I just have some chickens. This would be me on a skateboard. Blah! <laughs> This would be me looking at my child saying, really? <laughs> and then it's your birthday. You've got something to crow about. And then you can just, I have not finished the inside yet. And I used just some twine to tie some ribbon here so that you can just pull this. I didn't have a tag top of punch that's big enough for this piece because it's two and a half inches. So I just kind of snipped off the size and used a regular hole punch and put a hole in that. So there's a couple versions of a waterfall card. So I hope you enjoy those. Now let's see. There we go. I hope you enjoyed those. And if you, in a moment, there'll be a little link up here that will take you out to a waterfall card I did back in February that has four waterfalls on it. So have a wonderful week. Oh, my mouse is going crazy. Have a wonderful week, everyone. And I will see you on Monday with something new.